everyone, uh, this is Krishna, and I'm going to share uh, my group's Bloomberg Institute group uh, article embedding and use embedding challenge. So uh, without further ado, let's jump into the code. Here we've got a IPI notebook, and I've just got it loaded in PyCharm. But the uh, like real big overview is we try to like cluster all the news articles based on their embeddings. And so I draw it here in 3D space. But obviously we have like each of these factors are 500 fold dimension. And so just and this is really the gist of what we're doing. It's like, oh, all of these uh, vectors are close together and they'll have words similar to like use from or these ones are a different cluster and they have words similar to embedding. And that's what we're trying to learn. So the tools we learn uh, that we use here are pandas and numpy. Pandas especially, as you'll see in the beginning, or loading and manipulating the data. Then we've got some plotting with matplotlib and seaboard. And the real bulk of the work is being done with scikit-learn and including this uh, non-negative matrix factorization, which I'll get into more further below. So we just started by reading but this CSV files and getting the embeddings. Uh, they started out as a commerce separated by literally string with, um, and we, because they started with the open and close bracket, we had to do this and split and then reshape it like this so that like learns cosine similarity metric will work. And we thought that was really important because if you're trying to think of like a cluster, the vectors that have like really small angles and that those will be cosine similar. And so that's what we want to cluster together. So we read the challenge embeddings. These are the five special ones that we need to mark. And we had to do some, uh, just some extra work for this mystery embedding. But so what we had here is finding the optimal number of clusters. In that little drawing, we had three, but we used this metric called inertia, which is basically like the square distance to the closest centroid for each vector in our train set. And we average that. And we try that for different values of K. Now you see here, K is a range object. And what happens is we get this plot and right about 11, 10 to 11, it starts to slow down. And there's a lot less drop per cluster there. So we call this an elbow. And since that elbow is right around 10 or 11, we choose 11 as the number of clusters going forward. And so when we talk about like the real bulk of what's doing the work here, it's a non-negative matrix factorization. And we've got the original paper by Lee and Sung uh, linked here. And basically the idea of the non-night matrix factorization is you learn uh, two matrices, W and H. And W is a document topic matrix. So like basically for each document that you have and for the K equals 11 topics, how much of each topic is represented in every document. And H is a similar idea, it's a term topic matrix. So for every, word or group of words, what um, topics do those words generally represent? And so just to like make sure that this works, we did a train test split and we did a 80% to train. And so next we used a, it's called a term frequency inverse document frequency vectorizer. And what this does is it basically assigns every word a score, which is based on two things, term frequency, 
just like how often it appears in inverse argument frequency. And so the first part probably sounds familiar, but the second inverse document frequency is basically trying to say, if a word is used in a ton of documents, we're gonna punish it. Like it's not that special if it's a word like that, that appears a lot. And so to drive that point home, if a word appears more than 95% of the docs, just not included. And so are like stop words aren't included like the or but. And so we fit that term frequency in first document frequency on the train and test. And we get the map of this will create a token. So like some in and we'll save the token into actual words. So as promised, the number of topics and clusters we're looking at is 11. And so we'll use the NMF to get our um, document topic and term topic matrices. And next for each, um, for each topic that we have, we just want to see the top 15 terms associated with all those topics. And so that's what that looks like. And I can scroll down a bit. And we identified like, these are the big summaries of what all these 15 words are trying to say. And so now what we were thinking was, how do we know this actually works? Like, are, do these topics even make sense? And so that's why we did the test split. And so when we try um, to use the NMF to see like for any like document that we haven't seen, what are the like the document and the terms associated with it or the topics associated with it. And it looks pretty fine. It's like from what you can see here, Visually, if you take the time and look, these are all, they seem to check out with what we have up here. So that's nice. And then we've got some more of that over here. We're just seeing like for each um, topic, what are the two most representative articles? And those are also checking out. And so we can see like, what we have here, especially with the H matrix, which was term to topic, is it's kind of probabilistic in that if you look over here, we know that with like 0.3 probability, that open is going to be associated with this ninth topic, which seems to have tennis and golf terms. And then the next step was to combine all the data because we know this works generally for train and test split. And so we combine it and basically do the same thing. So all the intuition from above will carry over. And there wasn't really any change in the topics that we got, which is good. And so now we're going to try and see what happens on the challenge articles and see what kind of performance that comes up with. And so first, we need to do something because previously we were looking at the text files or the text from the CSV file and then using that as our input to the models. But now what we've got is just this 512 dimensional embedding for those five challenges. And so basically we get the WNH matrices from the NMF on combined data, which you've already seen. And then for each topic, we're gonna like see what are the five documents that are most similar to, because W will have like for each column, which is the topic, the rows corresponding to the highest numbers will be the top 15 documents for that topic. So then once we have those 15 documents, we can take a weighted average and then how to normalize that to get an average embedding for each topic, each of the 11 topics we have. And so that's part one. 
and we'll look at that shortly. But part two is really where we go from a topic to a set of words. And for that, we're gonna exploit this uh, H matrix. But first, what we have to do is using our uh, challenge embedding, we're gonna compare it to those 11 weighted averages that we calculated in part one using a uh, cosine similarity again. And then we're gonna use that as our topic for the challenge document and see what are the top terms associated with that and try to build a story around it. So here we're basically just gonna do exactly what we talked about here. And so we're taking this sort on W and the specific columns as promised. And then over here, we're doing a pretty simple weighting scheme, which is one over position. So the first embedding vector gets the most weight and they slowly decrease after that, half, one third, et cetera. Finally, we just help to normalize all the average topic embeddings so that Everyone starts in the same place when we go to part two, which is right over here. And basically what this constant is saying is we're gonna try to get the 20 terms associated with each topic and the top 20 likeliest terms to be more specific and build the story around that. So we have this uh, get most cosine similarity function, which is basically going to say for all the topics in a given embedding, what's the similarity between the average embedding and this uh, specific challenge embedding that we've got. And finally, here's where we exploit the H, the term topic matrix. And we again use an arg sort. This is a common theme here to get the top likely terms for any given topic. And here's what we get finally. And so based on these topics, we're gonna create some little storylines, which and then we as like people uh, knowing the sources, we added those like CNN or Department of Labor. And then the results are, uh, they are what they are. These are pretty specific um, texts that we've come up with. And I think that was part of our strategy was just to like, we felt pretty good about our train test split. And so we went specific on these and it might not have worked out, but honestly, these look pretty good for the time we had and we really enjoyed the challenge. So um, thank you all to Bloomberg Industry Group and to Tim with uh, Texas A&M for hosting this. Howdy.